Hey there guys and welcome to another Crytan photography video and today I'm going to be showing you how I edit my portraits using Snapseed. Okay so the first thing you want to do is obviously upload the photo of your choice into the Snapseed app and here is a photo of Becky that I um, currently shot a couple of weeks ago with her at um, Penguin Studios. We had a really really fun um, shoot and it was great to sort of play with uh, a one light setup as well. So um, here I wanted to show you guys how to actually edit faces on Snapseed. This is just purely my own opinion in terms of editing. There are some people that uh, obviously will edit differently and that's fine, that's your style. But I'm just gonna show any beginner that's new to the app as well um, what the portrait feature can do um, in terms of editing. So we're just gonna do all the global edits first. Uh, I like to get those out the way because it kind of allows me to see what I need to change first um, and things I don't like before I get into the more uh, destructive or ones that I can't really go back to. Um, so what you want to do first is to go into tools and obviously I go to tune image and I start off with brightening and contrast and shadows and all that kind of thing first. So, so for brightness I'm just going to increase it a little bit, maybe about 14. I kind of like that dark look, I don't want to lose that as well because um, I like the sort of moody appeal that she has and it really works with this portrait. So I'm just going to get to about 30 something there. And for the contrast, just a little bit, just to give it a bit more shadow. There we go, we're adding some drama to it as well. And then saturation, just a little bit not too much, maybe about 25. And it's bringing out that red lipstick that she had, um, which was really nice. There we go. And then highlights, tiny bit, not too much. There's not a lot of highlights because of the soft lighting I used. Um, so you probably won't play with that. If you push that right to the end, you'll notice it looks really, really bright, but I need roughly about there, about 20 something. There go, shadows, I'm quite happy with the shadows. I don't think I need to play with that. Uh, warmth, do I want to make it warm? Uh, not really, I kind of like the cold look that the, the light seemed to have captured, which that's just personal preference. Right, so I'm very happy with the settings I've picked for the tune inside. So I'm just gonna hit that tick. Right, now next I'm gonna do some of the healing uh, things. So if you know the healing brush, this tool is amazing and um, someone actually mentioned how satisfying it is using this. It really works well. So just hit that healing um, and there were a couple of spots and things that I wanted to get rid of just to, you know, so your eyes are not distracted when you look at the portrait, you're looking at her eyes rather than some of the spots that she's got on her face. So I'm just going to clear up some areas. And the healing brush is great because it seems to have quite a good algorithm of picking the area around it um, to sort of repair and stuff. Oops, that didn't happen. Um, okay, now I'm happy with those, with the heating brush tool. I'm gonna go into tools again. And then we're gonna scroll right to the bottom and just above double exposure, there is a portrait um, option. So hit that portrait mode. And in some cases, some people might have been using this before, so it will bring up the, the previous uh, setting that you had in terms of the, the presets at the bottom. But I like to start with none because I think every face and every look is different. So um, I like to play with those settings completely at zero, completely um, fresh start on those. So if you have a look, you've got the three options, which is face spotlight, skin smoothing, and eye clarity. I like to start with skin smoothing. However, there are a few things that I kind of want to get off my chest uh, about using some of these features because I do see this a lot on Instagram and other people's um, posts where they've really, really pushed it to the max. Um, just remember these tools are there to sort of, um, you know, help to uh, add an effect to the person that you're photographing, not to completely remodel their face and make them look completely unrecognizable. So. Uh, in this case, uh, all I want to do is just give her skin some glow um, and the face and the skin smoothing 
really does that. So if I push it right to the end, you'll notice that at 100%, it looks very plastic and very fake. And that's not what I wanna recreate here. This is not um, that kind of shoot. So I'm gonna aim for be between 20 and 30 because I wanna add that glow, but also I don't wanna overdo it to the point of her looking plastic. So about 20 and 30 seems to be the sort of safe area for my style of photography. So so about 32 seems to be where I want it. And I'm just gonna have a look. That's perfect. So I'm gonna keep it roughly about 30 to about 20 to 30 seems to be a good range. Uh, I don't want to completely erase the lines on her face. I want the skin pores to actually show as well. So about 20 to 30 seems to work pretty well. And then from there, um, I want to play with the eye clarity because um, what that helps to do is helps the eyes to stand out. But again, if you push it right to 100, you get these very plastic sort of glazed over eyes looking at you, very alien-like, very, um, as I like to describe it, uh, Egyptian uh, paintings uh, had these eyes that used to just glare at you when you looked at some of the hieroglyphics and stuff that they used and some of the stories in their pictures always had that really strong black pupil and that white eye, the white um, inner eye and I really really um, hate that so um, I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna aim for about 20 to 30 seems to be the safe spot okay so I'm quite happy at about 32. I think that works really well. You can obviously zoom in and edit how you see fit, but about 20 to 30 seems to be about safe for this app. Then what you wanna do is you have the option of uh, the face spotlight. Now this is great if you just want that face to really brighten up and stand out a bit more. Um, so I'm just gonna add a bit more light about 70 seems to work there. There we go. So I'm really happy with how it's looking uh, so far. And I can actually tap at the top, hold the picture down. And you can see the before and after. What a massive difference. And it still looks very natural to me and it still really works within this portrait shot. And then for the final bits, I'm just gonna do the normal uh, curves tool. So just using that curves tool just to give it that film dramatic look. Just a little bit there. And then last but not least, I'm actually just gonna crop the image just a little bit. and just maybe bring that up slightly. And there we have it. So this is my editing uh, portrait tutorial using Snapseed. I hope you like that. I hope it's, it's helped you guys use the, um, the portrait mode um, in the Snapseed app, which I really, really like using. It, this app's really great for sort of innovating and realizing that that's actually a need um, and it saves you using things like Photoshop and Lightroom to actually do that and Lightroom doesn't really have those features you've got to kind of um, wrangle your way but I have done a portrait tutorial using Lightroom so do check that out I'll pop a link in the description below this is a video I did a while back and hopefully that will help you guys using the Lightroom app um, but for Snapseed I found this really worked well um, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, do drop us a like, subscribe and share. Do your worst in that comment section. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.